progress on No Meregan has been pretty hard for my guild and that makes me happy because I have been hoping that they would turn the raid harder and they did. Today I'm gonna teach you how to kill all the bosses as a tank so you do not have to suffer like I have. For progression you are gonna need two tanks but you can solo tank the whole place once you get a bunch of gear and if your name is Shaman, if you are other classes you might struggle a little bit, a Shaman can easily solo tank this place by now. For everybody else however there are some really cool tanking mechanics this tier so let's take a look at them. The first boss is gonna be Grovis. This one is really easy at the start you're gonna see a bunch of uh, random trash mobs being summoned to you in waves you just gotta kill him it's pretty simple after that Grovis will spawn and then he's gonna spawn with his basilisk pet ideally you want the main tank on the Grovis and the, the other guy on the basilisk you can tank both of them but you are not gonna survive it without gear. He's gonna start spawning poison clouds on a random player. I put a weak aura in the UI channel in my discord that is gonna show you all the mechanics in Nomeregan. He's gonna warn you that you got the cloud so you got a couple seconds to run out of the guild so it doesn't spawn on top of the guild. This poison cloud does damage to the raid and if you put the boss in the cloud he is gonna enrage and most likely that's a wipe. Meanwhile, the Basilisk is just that simple tank and spank. Uh, he will stone you every so often with the Petrify ability. It makes you drop aggro. However, you can kick it and that's pretty much it. Just kick it. After Grovis comes in, he will start spawning us again. Uh, but now you can drag all the group of us into the poison cloud and they are gonna instantly die. Once again, this is a very good practice to have the off tank because the Basilisk will not enrage if you put him on the cloud. Have that guy pick up all the ads and take it to the cloud so they get one shot. Grovis is also gonna do an AOE every so often. The weak aura will tell you Grovis mad when he's gonna do it. If you are topped off, uh, don't really care to it. It doesn't do a lot of damage. Uh, otherwise, move out. And after that, you just rinse and repeat. It's pretty simple. It's, it's really easy. You can get this boss one shot. Most people I know one shot this boss on their first day of progression. Uh, when he gets down to 20% he is gonna enrage and he's gonna do more damage so be ready to burn him and that's it. The second fight is Viscos Fallout. You gotta clear the room so you can move in first and then you gotta pull him and after a few seconds he's gonna spawn three ads. These ads do not target anybody they just run into a random place and then they will transform after a few seconds. Ideally you gotta kill them before they transform because after they transform they do an AOE that you can kick but it does a lot of damage. If you got two tanks you can have one of the tank pick them up and just have the range people kill the ads. Otherwise if you are a more advanced guild, a more coordinated, a more geared guild, you can just take all the ads and stack them with the boss and cleave them down. One trick is that if you are the guy tanking the boss, when one of the gelatinous goose spawn, you can just follow it with the boss on you, so you can help the melee clip one of them, so that's one less you gotta deal with later. Every so often some green fire is gonna spawn below the boss and it's kinda hard to see. Again, the weak aura will tell you that you're standing on it, so all you gotta do is move him a little and that's it. This one is probably the easiest fight in the raid, it's, it's really, really easy. You can pretty much ignore all the mechanics and kill him, uh, most people. Uh, provided you got enough gear, uh, you can do it. Next fight is gonna be the crowd pommeler. This one is also gonna be pretty easy, you only need one tank for it. You just tank the boss slightly to one side of the platform and then he will do no Meregan slash. The animation is pretty cool. He just does like whoosh you and like a, a, a bomb goes goes forward. If you are in front of him and he does that, uh, he pushes you off the platform and you die instantly. So that's really bad. He's one of those robots that like spins the head. So it's kind of hard to tell where he's aiming at. So you gotta look at the tip of his feet. Okay, that's the, the angle where he's gonna throw it. He's also gonna do a circle AOE around him during that time. So if you are with that hitbox you are also gonna get knocked out then he spawns cogs on the ground and they move uh, do not get hit by them and that's pretty much it he will enrage at 30 percent and he's gonna do damage to a random target nothing you can really do about that J just kill him it is really really easy next fight is gonna be the electrocutioner and this is the first actual hard fight in the raid 
Uh, he basically has two mechanics. One of them is he picks a random target and they got an AOE around them. If people stand near them, they get hit, it, it hurts. For the second mechanic, this is the one that actually matters to you. He's gonna knock people up. So you as a tank, all you gotta do is stand against the wall so that way you don't get pushed away from the boss and mess everything up. If you the tank are the one that has the, the small AOE around them, uh, it's not a big deal because all the melee DPSers can still stand at max melee range and DPS. If one of the DPSers get it, they gotta, they gotta spread out, of course. And that's the whole part of the fight that matters to you as a tank. But of course, uh, that's not the hard part. And I guess since most main tanks are raid leaders, I guess you should know how this works. You are gonna need six range people. You're gonna need one group of three and another group of three. You're gonna send each one of these groups, one to the left, one to the right, and they gotta stand at about max range. Here's why, the boss is gonna target whoever is at the fortest away from the boss and he's gonna do chain lightning and he's gonna hit three people with it, of course. The damage is not a big deal, the problem is that if you take two in a row, you take five times the damage and that means you get one shot, that's the bad part. That's why we have two groups. One of the groups is gonna be at max range, they are gonna eat the chain lightning and then they are gonna fold in a little bit so the other group can take the next one. And then you rinse and repeat, you alternate the groups. That's pretty much it. Okay, now for the actual hard ones, this one is the mechanical menagerie. There is four robots, a sheep, a chicken, a squirrel and a dragon. If you stand near the sheep, you're gonna get stunned and it will chase you around. So you gotta keep moving away from it. Your job as tanks is picking up the three other robots and kite them around because they do a lot of mechanics that put stuff on the ground and you gotta move from them. Of course, the, their sheep is gonna chase you, so you also gotta move away from the sheep. The most efficient way of doing this is just kiting in a circular pattern around the place. If you are a shaman, if you are a paladin, perhaps even a warrior or a very, very geared druid, you can solo tank the whole thing, you can tank all three bosses, but if you got two tanks, the most easy approach is that you got one of the tanks tanking the dragon and the other guys tanking the, the other two mobs. The reason that you tank the dragon separately is because the dragon is gonna do a flamethrower in front of it wherever it aims and he's not gonna be moving with you when he does that so uh, you're gonna lose threat basically. That's why it's a good idea to have a, a somebody put in a lot of extra threat just so they don't lose aggro. The dragon is gonna spawn fire below it and you gotta move away from it and so that's another reason that you gotta keep moving. Meanwhile the squirrel is gonna summon like a circle on the ground that hits everybody so you also gotta move away from that. The squirrel has one cast ability the volley of gadgets or something like that, you just gotta kick it, that's pretty much it. The chicken on the other hand is gonna summon eggs, you gotta kill the eggs really fast otherwise they explode and they hit for a lot. The chicken also has an ability called clock where it is gonna boost the attack speed of every boss by 50%. There is not a lot that you can do about that but the weaker I will tell you so maybe you can pop your, your cooldowns or something, I don't know. Now the goal, if you had two tanks, is to keep all the mobs as stacked as possibly because when they are stacked everybody can clip them down and that is very important because you gotta kill all the mobs at the same time. There is a 30 second window after the mobs die and if that window passes they are gonna rest and that's gonna ruin your raid. Usually the range people focus on the ship until it gets too low and then they focus on the melee with the other guys. If your composition is trash and you do not have a lot of range you can also pop a free action potion and hit the ship for 30 30 seconds if you are like a warrior or something that also helps. Otherwise, you can just tell your raid to stop DPSing the mob that is too low so they can give time to the other mobs to catch up. And then you make sure that you kill every single one of them in a very short amount of time at the same time. Meanwhile, the last fight is Mechgineer Thermaplog and this guy is a pain in the butt, but the good news is you can solo tank it pretty much, it's pretty easy. If you are a warrior, you gotta take Intervene and the Warbringer rune. If you are a shaman, you gotta take your decoy totem rune. Uh, druids can also shapeshift and paladins can use Blessing of Freedom. You are gonna need a CC break for later in the fight. And why is this a fight a pain in the butt? That's because of the bot ons, okay, you gotta press buttons. Basically, during the fight, uh, one door is gonna open and bombs are gonna start dropping off it and you can only close it when you press the button of that door. You can only press a button every 30 seconds, so you gotta rotate people to make sure that they, they are getting pressed as soon as possible. You also gotta kill the bombs as soon as possible because if they explode, they leave a circle on the place that you cannot stand and uh, after a while you get run out of space, right? If you have a five ranged or more, it's not a big deal 
because you just send a range guy to click on the button. Otherwise, if your composition sucks like mine, you gotta do the melee. And that is not a big deal if you are a tank that is thinking about this because you can stand next to a button and that way you can be like helping out with them. Uh, also, the clicking a button is gonna take 30% of your, of your HP. It will give you 20% mana, but make sure you're topped off before you press it, of course. Okay, phase one, you pull the guy. He's gonna do a flamethrower every so often. He is gonna chase you and you gotta move away from him and kite him away so he doesn't actually hit you by it. The guy is gonna keep stacking fire debuffs on you and of course that's a dot. The more you get, the more damage you take. You can do a tank swap and wear off the stacks after 30 seconds, but for the most time, especially after you get some gear from Nomeregan, the boss is gonna die long before that is a problem. Of course, once you get him down to 50%, he's gonna phase into phase two. You get a break of like five seconds. So make sure everybody is bandaging when that happens. Gonna save the healer's mana. This fight is a, a really annoying fight to heal. And then comes the frost phase. This frost phase is the same mechanics as phase two. Click the bombs, uh, move away from stuff, all of that. But of course, this time, uh, when somebody gets 11 stacks of frost and they get the coolant discharge, they are gonna wipe the raid. So well, again, the frost we gotta get rid of. Luckily, the frost is a slow, so you can get rid of it with any CC breaking ability. So I got a list over here of anything that can break it so you can help the raid. PvP Trinket, Shape Shifting, Warbringer, Ice Block, Blinking, The Gnome Racial, Blessing of Freedom, Decoy Totem, The Paladin Bubble. You can even dispel it because it is also a magical effect. If you pop a free action potion before you get stacks, you are gonna be immune to them for 30 seconds. Of course, if you already have one stack and you pop the potion, uh, you are gonna not be immune to it, so don't do it. But regardless, as a tank, you should be trying to use Warbringer on cooldown. As a druid, you can just shapeshift whenever you get a couple stacks. But if you are a paladin or a shaman, when you get a, a long cooldown, uh, that is an issue because you're gonna have to save it for when you get like nine stacks. Of course, if you got another paladin or a shaman in your raid, they can also help you with Blessing of Freedom. But for the most part, they gotta save those for the raid because all the people in the raid are gonna be taking stacks. And uh, remember, uh, dispelling is very mana intensive for the priest because they can only dispel two stacks at the time. Meanwhile, any CC break is gonna get rid of every stack. Remember, the bombs are still going off in this phase. They are gonna be going off the whole fight. You gotta click the buttons. That never stops. After he gets down to 50% again, he will do the poison phase. This time the stack is gonna be a disease, and that means that any disease cleansing ability is gonna get rid of it. Huge horde bias here, because that means that a disease cleansing totem is gonna help you ignore the whole mechanic. If you are Alliance, however, you can take the Cursen Jungle Remedy, it will get rid of the diseases for you. You can farm those guys in STB, it's not that really hard. If you got like two of those for the raid, you're gonna be the hero of the raid. But overall, if you are a Horde, the fight is not really hard at this phase. All you gotta do is kick the Toxic Ventilation ability and that's it. Once you take him down to 50% again, you can do the last phase. This is the hardest. He's gonna do everything at once. He's gonna use the Flamethrower, he's gonna do Toxic Ventilation, he's gonna stack stacks on you the whole thing and remember the bombs are still dropping so you still gotta press the buttons this is a bit of a dps check because you cannot survive this phase for very long of course all you gotta do as the tank is just make sure that you don't die and after you get him down to zero remember this time his hp is like half of any other phase so effectively you gotta do the same damage to end this phase as before that way he's gonna dismount and he's like a tiny mob and you kill him really easily, that's just a bit of a joke. And then he dies. This fight is awful. As a bear I was getting two shot by the boss in phase 2 and it was so awful even after the buffs. I am leveling my warrior, he's like 33 now, I am gonna back, go back to my prot warrior because the bear is so awful. Okay, I was the first guy saying that uh, druid in phase 1 was just fine, people were complaining for nothing. No, 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 no. Now it is actually bad. Either way, anybody else, you got an easy time. Subscribe, leave a like, join the discord and thank you for watching.